Hi guys, I'm back after a little bit of a break and I thought I would share with you the process of painting these little jack-o'-lanterns and also making them into stickers. I love how they come out. I'm super excited. They're already on my shop. I'm definitely going to stick them all over the place. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start out by showing you the pencil sketch and then we'll get into inking and then i decided to use watercolor for these ones uh, it's very similarly to how i made my little jack-o'-lantern sticker last year so it's sort of inspired by kind of your classic like ink and watercolor halloween art uh, i actually last year got a box of tissues <laughs> that were halloween themed and I really like the artwork on them. It reminded me of like some of the decorations we used to put up at my mom's house. So that's what inspired last year's jack-o'-lanterns. And so I thought I would do something pretty similar this year, except with this time a sticker pack rather than just one sticker. And I wanted these pumpkins to have a variety of sizes and uh, different cute little faces on them. So yeah. Let's get into it. Uh, this video, I'm not uh, speeding up as much as I would usually do. I thought I'd just keep it chill. You can turn this on, chill, drink a cup of coffee, draw with me, whatever, and just hang out, listen to some music, and do whatever you want to do. So. Uh, I'll pop in occasionally to explain what I'm doing, but for the most part, uh, let's just watch and hang out. So this is a little bit of a different setup from usual. I really like to sit in front of my TV at my little table and paint and draw and whatever, but it's not always been convenient for filming and I can't use my arm thing, whatever the heck that you can attach to the side of a table here because there's, I mean, there's just the shape of this table, there's nowhere to clamp it. So I went and found this, you can actually see the shadow. It's a little, not a tripod, it's just, it's a little stand, I guess, thing where you can clip your phone in. And unfortunately, that means there's a big old shadow in the way. Uh, and yeah, um, because this is a different setup from usual and my phone was sort of covered, I went to press the record button and I didn't actually press it. And I didn't realize until I went to fill in like the dark spaces with a thicker pen that uh, I hadn't actually recorded any of the line art. So uh, let me explain what I did. I just used uh, some fine liners. I think I used a 0.3 for most of this. And then right now I'm filling in the dark spaces with the Tombo Fudenosuke pen. This is the, how would you say that in English? The the harder tip one. I really like this one. The only downside is if you use it on something like watercolor paper, it absorbs it pretty quickly, so you can't write too fast. If you write too fast, it doesn't make a clean line. It sort of skips a bit, so you just have to go slow, and it probably uses a lot of ink if you use it on watercolor paper, but obviously I gotta do it here. And I did have to go over some spots a few times, and in the end, it 
wasn't completely solid like you could still see some texture hopefully you'll be able to see that in the close-up but i actually liked that so i decided not to go over it again and leave some of the you know slightly darker patches slightly like lighter patches for the texture i just thought it suited the watercolor look a bit more and it looks a little more uh like a little more like there's motion or like it's alive i didn't want it i mean the reason i was doing traditional art rather than doing this digitally is because i wanted it to have a little more whimsy and texture so that was totally fine with me i think you definitely can get a very solid look with the fudenosuke pen just you have to go over it more than once maybe two times would probably be fine uh but yeah I'm just gonna finish coloring all of this stuff in uh, before I bust out the watercolors. So now it's time for the watercolors. Um, last year I used just the Holbein watercolor tubes just in the colors that I had. So I had uh, the, just the primaries. So I mixed a red and a yellow and diluted it. And then I made like whatever the purple was with some blue, pretty basic last year. This year is pretty much the same. Uh, though I did decide to use my Winsor Newton Cotman palette uh, just for the sepia mostly just to get some darker values so mostly that's what I did uh, there is some gouache on this palette I did not use the gouache I used a little bit of the Chinese white from the Winsor Newton Winsor Newton <laughs> Winsor Newton Cotman palette uh, which is a bit more opaque than the rest of the watercolors so eh, it, was, it was okay uh, mostly i didn't I, I considered adding highlights but i thought that would look it would stand out a little too much so i didn't really any place i wanted a little less color or more transparent color i just sort of lifted with my watercolor pen i also didn't use like any particular watercolor brush I just grabbed this one and I didn't even have like a cup of water with me so this was just real chill minimal preparation I just put down I made a whole bunch of the same orange color and I just put down one base layer I ended up doing a little bit of shading with the same exact color just one more layer uh, with the same orange color and then for 
the other shading, like the slightly darker bits, I added just more red because I just thought it would be cool to have slightly more saturated shadows because usually I go for less saturation or cooler shadows uh, because sunlight tends to make cooler shadows. But I thought it might be a little fun and kind of cartoony to do slightly more red shadows. And then for the deepest shadows, I did end up adding sepia and maybe a little bit of, uh, what did I add? Burnt sienna? Yeah, but it didn't show up much. So that's why I started adding sepia. And that is quite a bit cooler. So I don't know, I think it makes it, makes the tone really interesting. It makes some areas of the pumpkins more vibrant and warm. And then the deepest places are cooler and less saturated. So I just thought it was cool. It ended up looking pretty fun. And then I used just a little bit of like yellow and green to make like a very, I don't know, like a pumpkin stem color. That's really all I did. And then the insides of the pumpkins where there's the little cutouts, those were just straight up yellow. They ended up looking a little closer in value to the outside parts of the pumpkins than I intended. So they don't stand out quite as much, but honestly I think that's fine because it wouldn't show up really well at a smaller scale anyway as a sticker. So I think it turned out for the best.
So here's a little clip of me making them into stickers with my Cricut Joy. If you want to know how I use my Cricut Joy without print and cut to make my stickers, you can check out the video. I'll link it in the description, put it on the screen or whatever. But yeah, I think they came out super cute. I want to stick them on everything. Yes, that is candy corn from last year. I'm using to decorate. But yeah, here's how the packaging turned out. I think that's also super cute. I've already made a design of just that little row of pumpkins with them all right side up. And I just really want to put it on a t-shirt. So maybe I'll get a chance to do that this month. We'll see. These little stickers are on my shop currently. If you want to get them for yourself, I suggest ordering sooner rather than later so they have time to reach you. Uh, and that's about it for this little video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Whatever, whatever. And thank you for watching. See you guys next time.